So hi everyone, and uh, and welcome for uh, for a new live conference. Uh, today we are with Didier. Uh, most of you you know him already. So Didier is a, a bean sport consultant and technical advisor for for Paris Saint Germain Academy Qatar. Uh, he was a professional player in PSG first team from PSG youth system uh, to the first team in the in the 90s. I think you played uh, five years five seasons with the first team. He also played in English Premier League in Spain, in Greece, in United States. And he was for 18 years, the youngest player to play with PSG first team until, uh, until Kingsley Coman in 2013. So he started with the first team when he was 17 years old. So Didier, welcome. And thank you for, for being with us today. No problem. It's a pleasure <laughs> just to see all the kids, to see you guys. As you know, we're all a family, so uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, faces that I know. So that's great. You know, we're gonna have a uh, a great chat today. Awesome, awesome. We're all uh, very excited to have you here. Uh, we see you on the field, but it's uh, it's good to get to know you uh, a little more. You know, a little more personally than just on the field, right? Uh, yes, so no problem. You can uh, ask me any question that you want. Uh, of course, you know, I always say, you remember, you know, before being a physical activity, you know, football is a human activity. So it's good to know people, to know our kids, to know where they're from, the background. And uh, once you know more the human side, it's even better sometimes just to, uh, to develop them and to develop us, you know, as a footballer. Yeah, Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, DJ, yeah, first, uh, can you just introduce yourself, you know? Yeah, so uh, as Cyril said, it's all, uh, my name is DJ Domi, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I entered the Youth Academy. I was, uh, I was 13 years old. First of all, um, I, I did a, a trial, you know, around Paris in the suburb of Paris. So uh, there's some trial in the north, east, south and, uh, and west. And I was in the north side, so for under 13, just to uh, enter the Paris Saint-Germain Academy. So there was a lot of, uh, uh, of people, obviously. So uh, it was just some matches, some drills, some juggles. And, um, and we had some coaching on the side who were evaluating us. So um, yeah, for me, it was a, a surprise. You know, I didn't expect you know, just to enter the academy, but that's how, we, uh, how it started. So, uh, so that was pretty good just to have that kind of... Uh, a first impression with Paris Saint-Germain. Um, can you give us a brief description of your past uh, as a player for PSG? And uh, the yes. formation as well? Yes, yeah, so the, at, at the youth academy system, so you go to the U13, U14, obviously everybody knows. So uh, of course there is different drills, you know, when you're more 13 and 14, you just, uh, uh, learn more about all is uh, about perception and technique and uh, and the more you go the more it will be a uh, uh, physical and then I um, I made my first game yet as uh, at 16 and a half it was a league cup against Lyon and that's where it was started as well so I mean as a 16 year old making your debut you must have had some pretty distinguishing uh, qualities so what are some qualities that enabled you to become a professional uh, you know, every professional, I think, you know, you made your career on a strong uh, uh, quality. You can have two or three, but you always have to have a strong quality. And mine was a, was a speed, obviously. And then you try to, uh, to develop your technique. So uh, uh, because I was quite quick, you know, they put me uh, as a fullback left because I'm a left footed. So uh, um, yes, every player has a strong quality. And of course, you know, he should develop the other one, but he should develop this one. And, and that's why, you know, as a, as a left back, because you, uh, you play a lot uh, uh, strong and fast wingers, so I had to be fast. So that was my, my quality, yes. And so you played with some of the, some of the biggest names in football. Uh, can you um, speak about your debuts as a pro and the players that you played with? Yeah, first of all, I, I remember my first game, you know, so it was in, uh, in League Cup, so... 
I saw that uh, there and uh, and there was David Ginola, you know, who played in the Premier League after and uh, and he was such a, a nice guy because he introduced me to the team. I was a bit shy, so it was a <laughs> right, right, right. it was a bit difficult just to uh, all those great names because I had to train before and with George Weah and uh, all Rai who were uh, you know big stars you know in, in Paris Saint Germain. So, uh, right. but it was great you know because they made me feel really uh, really comfortable and uh, right. and the, the, the first game was uh, was only three minutes, but it was uh, it was lasting. It was like kind of lasting because. Uh, um, you know, it's not the same pitch. The Parc des Princes is a big one, so obviously with the Youth Academy, we run small pitches, so everything was quite different. So you had to adjust uh, uh, really quickly, but that was a, a good experience. And you weren't overwhelmed by all the fans that were there? It just came natural to you to, to hop on the field and play? Yeah, because you have a lot of um, support, especially from the fans, because then are you young? They know first of all you come from the academy, so there is that kind of proudness where they welcome you with a, with a lot of cheers and whatever mistake you will do, they will still support you. So from that side, that was a, that was great and uh, and perfect. You know Paris and the suburb, how people there, the pride just to play for for Paris and Berlin and to represent the team. So um, just to have them around, you know, it was a big game because it was against Lyon at that time. It it was great, yeah. Okay, so we have a question from Yassin. Uh, Yassin, go ahead and ask your question. Just unmute yourself and uh, you can go ahead and ask your question. I didn't ask a question. You didn't? I saw something on the chat. Okay, well, um, he said, which, which was the most memorable match for you, Didier? Um, yeah, there, there is two. The, the, the first one is... Um, uh, we played um, the Cup Winners' Cup final, European Cup final. Uh, it was PSG Barcelona in '97. It was in Rotterdam. Um, it was great because we had a very good team, you know, with Leonardo and Ryan and the others. But uh, and we were playing against Guardiola, against Ronaldo, the Brazilian. So it was a, a beautiful team in front, and the, the atmosphere was incredible, you know, especially Paris Saint Germain. You know, it was half white, half uh, uh, blaugrana, but um, the, the fact that there's so many fans of Paris Saint Germain, and honestly, they were doing the most of the noise. It was a, it was a great, great, uh, great memory, great night. Unfortunately, which lost, but um, uh, that was part of the history of Paris Saint Germain, and and that was a great, great memory uh, for me. And the other one, it's a, it's a game that uh, all fans of Paris Saint Germain knows. It was a, a PSG Steaua Bucharest. In, um, in previous, you know, for Champions League. The fact is, because we had some problem with, um, with rules, you know, we, we lost 3-0 at the beginning of, uh, of that game. Um, the UEFA say, because you did a mistake uh, in a, in a, with papers and strategies, so we lost 3-0 and we had to, to, to win 4-0. So the atmosphere was quite electric in, uh, in Paris Saint-Germain and it was a, a great memory because I scored three goals, I think. Uh, Leonardo, who's the, the director, uh, sporting director, now gave four assists. So it was kind to remember because we, we, we won five nil and we qualified for Champions League. So uh, he will stay forever in the, in the heart of Paris Saint Germain final. So, I mean, you obviously consider these some of the most memorable, memorable memories that you played, um, that you kept while playing for Paris, right? Yeah, but the, the, the most too, but there is uh, others, uh, Yannick. Uh, um, for example, we make the double in 98. It was the first two finals in uh, League Cup and French Cup final in the Stade de France. Mm -hmm. And one or two months after, you know, the France would won the World Cup 98. So we won the, um, the League Cup against Bordeaux, I think, and the French Cup against Lens. So we make the double in the two first final in the Stade de France. That was as well a great memory. And a great one because in a, in a, in a French Cup final, it was the 2nd of May. And, uh, and I'm born a 2nd of May, uh, 78. So they did a surprise for me, you know, I and Paul Le Guin and Bernard Lama. They didn't tell me. They say, you would be the one. Uh, I was 20 at that age. Who will leave the trophy? So it was quite a surprise, but a big promise that they they yeah, saw yeah, about yeah. me. So there's many, many memories in, in Paris. 
Awesome. That must have been a great birthday gift then. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you played abroad. So what are some of the most uh, memorable um, things that you kept while playing abroad? Uh, but, but, first of all, sometimes you play abroad in, um, in European Cup with right. Paris Saint-Germain. Right. So it, it, it's great first to, to see all the iconic stadium in Europe a Celtic or Liverpool and the others, and the, and to see actually the the Paris Saint Germain fan, you know, doing noise in those stadium, so that was quite uh, unbelievable. But um, yes, Premier League was special because the atmosphere around the stadium in life it's very family, but at the same time they do a lot of noise. In 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 Spain, it was more about the game. Um, I think in terms of quality at that time, it was one of the best in the world. So. It's really high level in terms of uh, technical skills. So I had great time in every, um, every aspect. And the other one is just to, to discover a lot of culture. So uh, sometimes you can have um, people who sing to you, be careful in Spain or in England, something uh, like this will happen. But uh, I had great time and I discovered a lot of great persons. So just travel for football or for whatever purpose it will make you uh, honestly a better citizen because you know there is great people out there in every country. So that was a lesson of life for me. So we have a question from Bader Salim. Bader, do you want to go ahead and ask your questions? Bader. Okay, so his questions were, how can a player deal with uh, challenges from other players during the game, during the match? Um, but first, you know, you Mr. have to... I, I send, I send by chat. By chat, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so one of his questions was how, um, how a player can maintain high performance during these current uh, pandemic situations? Um, of course, you have to have the, um, the motivation, a big motivation. That's really important. But most of it, you have to have a consistency in your motivation. Who will make you every day make a little bit of drills? I know there is education. There is a lot of homework sometimes. But um, as we know in the academy, you know, uh, progression is repetition. So uh, you need to practice your drills as, um, as, um, as many times as you can. Of course, you know, the juggle play in the street, you dribbles, just to play games. Sometimes I know it's a bit difficult. There's the social uh, distancing, of course. So if you cannot do it, of course, with people, you know, you just juggle just to maintain your, your technical uh, improvement. So that's very, very important. All the time to have the touch of the ball, even with a wall, even with, uh, with something, but, uh, just to practice it. All right. So... Can you list a few managers that had a huge impact on your on your career as well as players? But it would be the first one, Luis Fernandez, mm -hmm. uh, because he, um, he was in the youth academy in the 70s in Paris Saint-Germain. Okay. Uh, he won the uh, European Championship in 84 with, uh, with France. And, uh, and you know what? I was uh, eight, I think, and it was my first World Cup in, uh, that I watched in 86 in Mexico. And there was that, uh, that game, France-Brazil in quarterfinals, which is one of the best ones in the whole history of World Cup. And Luis Fernandez at the, um, the last penalty just to qualify France for the semifinal. And he would be the coach uh, who would be um, the one who would make my first game against yeah. Lyon that uh, I was telling you earlier on uh, in the League Cup. So it was great just to see him on TV. Um, when I was young and, uh, and just to know him after and became a friend. So it was, um, it was very important because he always supported me, even in difficult moments. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Luis Fernandez will always be a special uh, uh, coach and person for me upon my development. And because he was an iconic player in Paris Saint-Germain, because he's the one who was captain the team when they, they won their first title in '86. I know a lot of players there. They know that generation of Neymar and Mbappé, Ibrahimovic, but uh, there were some great players before. And our first title for Paris Saint-Germain, it was in 86. And it was a guy coming out from a youth academy, Luis Fernandez, 
and would play for France and then, you know, would coach in Spain and everything. So he was very, yeah. All right. So Ahmed actually had a question. He wanted to know what the best advice a manager gave you. Uh, the best advice, it's, um, it's always, always uh, telling you about the, the, intensity, the intensity of motivation and the, and the consistency in the motivation because that's the one who will generate all the effort to improve every day on your technical size, on the physical size, on the mental size, and even tact tactically. So uh, it's very important to have that motivation will drills you all the time and will, uh, will push you to always improve and to stay humble and, um, and, and try to, to, to take the maximum out of your capacity. So that's the best advice. You know, it's, a, it's like a coach. When he coach, he tried to, to take the maximum of his players individually or collectively. So the best advice that they gave me is to take the maximum and every day to be uh, willing to improve, that I can improve individually, individually and then improve the team after that. Okay. So Yassine, did you want to ask your question? We had a question you wrote in the chat. Yes. What was going through your mind when you first entered the field in your first match? Well, uh, first of all, when, when you do your first match, you don't say your first match, you don't sing uh, uh, clear. You know, there is a, a lot of pressure. As like I told the, you. the one with the fans where like it's an actual match where it's on TV. Sorry, I seen what did you say? Like when there's a match that's on TV that you're being recorded. So what is your question exactly? Sorry. What what, what was going through your mind when you first entered the field? Ah, a lot of things, you know, you um but you think of uh, all your training that you've done with your teammates, uh, being young, all the sacrifices you, you, you've done. And, uh, and the first thing when you enter the pitch, you're so happy because um, you see a big stadium, you see a lot of people who support you uh, in, in that stadium, you see your family, uh, you see your teammates of the Youth Academy, you see your partners who are helping you, they're uh, a bit older than you. So overall, this is a, a big joy and be proud because uh, you play for your for your team. I was uh, a fan of Paris Saint-Germain being brought uh, uh, in the suburb of Paris. So it's just proud and, uh, and uh, happiness, yes. All right. So DJ, you're, you, you are a, a TT Parisien, a pure TT Parisien. So can you explain to us what that means and what it entails? A Titi Parisien, first of all, is uh, to um, someone who's been brought in Paris or in suburb of Paris. Um, there's six or seven zones. And, um, and being a Titi Parisien is to, be, uh, to support Paris Saint-Germain, uh, to be most of the time, of course, being brought in the, in the youth academy system and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and finish professional but overall it's just the proudness to be a to be part of the, um, the professional world you know uh, 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 I've been brought you know very young in uh, in the suburb of Paris so that's the that's the state of mind to be Titi Parisien but uh, this right. is the so, proudness first yeah so what is what does PSG mean for you actually Paris Saint-Germain itself what does it mean to you but this is family Honestly, this, <laughs> this is the first one. It's simple as that because um, you know everybody from the from the academy, from the professional, from the medical staff, from the from the fans, from the radio. So uh, uh, being a TT and being in the, a PG, this is being part of the of the family. Uh, as you know, Paris is a uh, it's twelve million people with uh, with the suburb, so it's quite a big city. So we have a uh, um, a lot, a lot of players. So that's the iconic club. As you know, you can go to Milan, to Manchester, to Real Madrid. Most of the team, and I don't even talk about London. There is a lot of teams, or two, uh, two teams in uh, in each big city. But in Paris, there's only one. So you imagine, you know, everybody wants to uh, uh, 
uh, to play for that team. And, um, and this is most of the time the team that we support in Paris and suburbs. So that, that's what you represent. Uh, this is one of the most iconic city in the world. And I think this is the most visited city in the world with, uh, with London. So imagine when you have only one club, uh, everybody support it. And the second thing is to play for that club. Imagine the proudness. Okay. So Chris, did you want to go ahead and ask your question? Um, uh, coach, what's your favorite position? And what's your hardest position? Ah, uh, you know, Chris, I, I was playing, um, I was playing left back. So I'm more of a defender. I know most of the young people, they want to play offensive midfielder or striker. Unfortunately, I didn't have the qualities, but, um, but anyway, you know, in a team, you know, you, you, you need every position, even a goalkeeper, even a defensive midfielder. So I enjoy over the time, you know, to be a, a left back, just attacking on my side. Uh, but of course, you know, the position that I like, it's, a, it's when we had Ronaldinho in the team, it's, a, it's skillful players in the midfield. I really like to watch them because they're very creative. They've got that flair, they've got that instinct, they can dribble. They can score, as you know. So uh, um, I really like offensive midfielders. So, um, you know, having played with Ronaldinho, that was one of the best things um, who happened to us, not only me, you know, everybody in the, in the club and the team, because we have a, a real gem in the team. Uh, he was all the time smiling, but this is the, the, the quality of his dribble, of everything on the pitch, you know, his movement. So. Uh, it was a real pride just to um, have played with him. So, DJ, um, you've transitioned into a world of um, sports analytics. Like, you you know, um, trans transitioned from becoming a professional football player to a being sports analyst, right? How did that come about? How did, why did you choose this field? Why did you choose becoming a sports analyst? Oh, sorry, Yannick, I could hear you. I, I oh, couldn't hello. hear you. Hello? Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, hello? One second. Hello, DJ, can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, it's very good now. Okay, all right. So, yeah, DJ, after your professional career, you've transitioned into becoming a sports uh, consultant, sports analyst. Uh, how did that come about, your switch? Oh, it, was, uh, it went really um, smoothly. It was good because this is still the, the industry of, uh, of football. And, uh, and, uh, and it's really good because, as you know, I like you know, to talk about football, to analyze game, to analyze game outside the Beansport uh, channel, just to see the, the development in football. In every aspect, it can be tactically, it can be how they manage. I follow the coach, everything. So it was just a, a nice and a really logical uh, uh, transition. And uh, because I was in Qatar, so being sports called me. So um, yeah, now I can analyze the game. Most of the time I've done the, the League One and Paris Saint-Germain over the last eight years. Right. Now, most of the time it's, uh, it's Premier League and Champions League. So I follow still Paris Saint-Germain. Like, uh, like yesterday with that uh, <laughs> great victory. Uh, so it's great because you, you can still follow all the football world. We do the European football world, but you can see sometimes much in South America. So you can see the, the new talent in, uh, in Brazil, in, uh, in Argentina or in Copa Libertadores. Of course, you follow all the stars in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, but, uh, but you can follow every position. And it's great because it's so rich. You have so many coach, coaches, so many influences, right. so many tactics, so many, many concepts of plays, so many principles. Spain is not Scotland. Scotland is not France. France is not Holland. So it's good to see that because you can see the, the strengths and weaknesses of every, uh, every league. As, uh, for example, Holland and France, they will always be a, a big uh, producer of talent. And you've got the best club in, uh, in Bayern Munich or in Spain and Paris Saint-Germain. So it's great to follow all that world of football that we, we belong to. 
All right. And are there some prerequisites that you need to become a sports analyst? Are there some things that you need to do before um, certain studies that you need to do? Or is it just experience watching football? How does it, how does it, how does it work? No, you, you have to either, you know, pass your, um, um, some coaches uh, things sometimes. But first of all, you have to have the passion. It means you have to watch football every day. And even if you don't analyze on TV, you must analyze the big games, the big teams. Um, you have to follow everything, you know, even the uh, small players sometimes in, the, in other divisions uh, in order to make the analyze, the analyzes a bit more uh, uh, accurate. It's not um, when you analyze, okay, you see the last two games of the team that you would analyze. No, it's a perpetual uh, walk. And, um, and that's why, first of all, you have to be really passionate. And, uh, and it's a walk of every day. You know, it's a walk of, uh, of walking on every big games. After you watch, uh, I don't know, Paris Saint-Germain, Bayern Munich, you just analyze it on TV, but you have to see it again just to analyze uh, other things and to be more accurate in your, uh, in your punditry. All right, so for instance, yesterday's game against Bayern, were you mostly watching the game as a fan or mostly like an analyst? Were you, how would you? How would you uh, yeah, yeah, yesterday it was, uh, it was both, but more as, a, as an analyst, of course, because, um, because you have to deliver uh, uh, an analyze to, to everybody. But uh, I was uh, watching it uh, as a fan, of course, you know, because I've seen uh, some young players like Impembe, like Dagba, okay, they suffered. But they, they struggle, but they, they, they still won, you know, Mbappe is from Paris. So uh, uh, you, you watch it with the both eyes, the right eyes is on the analyst and the left eye is on, <laughs> on Paris Saint-Germain. Okay. What's the more? All right, and um, how would you, uh, for instance, you're preparing a, a game, right? What yeah. are some key things that you do before preparing a game, before going into the analysis of the game, analysis of the game? Yeah, as I told you, um, it's really all the time. Okay. You have to analyze most of the team that you will follow, that you know you will, uh, you will uh, analyze. It's not like Saturday, I do that team. Okay, I have to work on it. But it's more a day-to-day -day work, uh, watching the strengths, um, what is their weaknesses, how they attack, tactically how they set up, how the defender is, uh, is working, are they good on 1v1, in the air, or, or, or on the ground, how is doing the wingers, everybody, and, and all the relation between them and uh, how they could hurt the opposition and, uh, and how they could suffer. So you tend to watch the last two games of that team and all the composite, all of the aspects, mentally, tactically, uh, how they analyze, how they, the decision-making is, how is the execution, what is the best players, what is, uh, I told you, the weakness. So there's many things um, that you have to take in a, uh, uh, in a game. There's a lot, a lot. There's not only the ball. It's sometimes um, you watch a player when you have the ball. Right. You watch a player when he doesn't have the ball. But when he doesn't have the ball, when his team has the ball, when the opponent has the ball. So how does he scan the pitch? How does he move? Uh, does he make space for his partner? Um, how does he take the space? You know, is he more intelligent? Is he more physical, explosive? Is he more skillful? So the game is so rich that you have many things to, um, to analyze. Okay, that's very insightful. Thanks, DJ. Um, do you have any, um, like, what are you, does becoming a football manager, are, is that in your prospects at all or? This is one of the questions from one of the kids. Is becoming a manager in your prospects in the future? One second. One second, DJ. We cannot hear you.
Sorry, DP, one second. Uh, can you turn your mic on? Okay. Yeah, so basically the question was, is becoming a football manager in your prospects, maybe in the future or after becoming a sports analyst? Uh, now, I was telling you about uh, the, the son was off. Uh, it's more into the US Academy system, uh, system that I like. Um, just to manage men, them, just to develop them, just to, uh, uh, to brainstorm uh, how we can improve the, the player. And if it was with the professional, it would be more a, a management, a director, you understand? Because there's so many positions in the club. Um, so if it was with the professional, it would be more uh, a director, because I like that, you know, the relation with the players and, uh, uh, and to watch game and everything. So it would be that. So guys, if you guys have any questions regarding um, Didier, uh, go ahead and please ask. Feel free to ask. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. I have a question. Yes, Abdullah. Yes. Um, how old the stadium? How what? Sorry. How was the stadium? Ah. Oh, uh, you can imagine Abdullah. Imagine you you enter and you have forty five thousand people or forty eight. So imagine the joy, the atmosphere, the noise, the everything, you know, and uh, um, it, it was special. It was special and a lot of joy because uh, at the end of the day, you play better when you have fans. I know this is a, a strange situation at the moment because you can see all the game on TV, there's not too much fans. So um, that's where you realize that uh, we need fans to have support, to have cheers, to share the emotions. So it was a great joy just to enter the pitch of the line. Mm. Uh, I have a question. Chris? I have a question. We are happy for the match yesterday, PSG won against Bayern Munich. Um, Who is the best player play yesterday match? <laughs> Uh, yesterday, as you've seen, you know, Neymar and Mbappé, they were very good because uh, Neymar gave two assists and he was coming back from, uh, from injury the last Saturday and Mbappé was great as well with, uh, with his two goals and, um, and I think PSG, um, uh, they were very resilient. As you've seen, there were many chances from Bayern, but... Uh, they hold on, they were uh, uh, very close to each other. So uh, I like the mentality yesterday and at the top end of the pitch, <laughs> uh, you could see the, the two best players who's there, uh, who's there to, uh, to give assist and, uh, and to score. So of course, we're gonna see the work of Neymar and Mbappé because they're the best players and the best gifted. But overall, even with the injury of Marquinhos, it was, uh, it was a brilliant, uh, brilliant win because we suffered, but we didn't crack, it. and it was a win. So that's very good for for next week. Me coach. coach. One second, guys. <laughs> One at a time, guys. I will unmute you guys. So Chris, go ahead. What's your question? How long it took you to score your first goal, and uh, how did you feel? And was it in PSG? Uh, no, I didn't score that much in my career. You know, my first goal was uh, in England, I think. And um, yeah, it was in front of a cop. So it was really good. Imagine. It's even more joy, Chris, because when you don't score that often like me, when you score, you're so happy that, <laughs> uh, that of course, you know, it's uh, everything. You don't see nothing. You just celebrate. And, uh, and that's really great. Yeah. Oh, what, about, what, Karim? Do you have a question? Go ahead, Karim. Yes, coach. Coach, um, do you think Bayern would have won if Lewandowski wasn't injured and would have played? Who? Sorry, uh, get it? Do you think Bayern would have won if Lewandowski wasn't injured and would have played? 
Ah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, yes, it would have been uh, a biggest threat because they had so many crosses into the box yesterday. And uh, of course, Lewandowski is really, really good. Um, but of course, if we had Marquinhos as well, uh, it would have been hard for Lewandowski, but you know how good he is and he always scores. So it could have been more difficult for us, of course. And because okay. it got a great ratio, it could have been more dangerous. But, you know, Marquinhos and Kimpembe are really well and we lost Marquinhos. So if Marquinhos was there, maybe he wouldn't have scored. And also, Coach Gnabry um, had Corona, so he didn't play the game. Yeah, exactly, Karim. So, of course, you know, when you don't have Gennabry and Lewandowski, uh, but we didn't have, you know, all the Icardi, the Paredes, the Verratti, was very, very important for us. Uh, we didn't have Bernat, our left back. Uh, Dagba, yeah. Yeah, Dagba is... Uh, guys, guys, I will unmute you guys. So. Uh, he played right back and, uh, and he fought well. You know, he had some problem at the beginning with, uh, with Coman, but he fought really well. So, we had a couple of... Um, Absence as well. All right, Mohamed Amin, what was your question? My question was, how Ronaldinho played with you? Oh, Mohamed Amin, uh, Ronaldinho, he was um, the Brazilian magic. <laughs> that means he has so much skills you can't imagine. I don't know it like a magician. He's got tricks everywhere. So he can dribble you very easily. Uh, he's got a, a, a wonderful touch, uh, wonderful dribbles. Uh, his shifts are unbelievable. And um, that's one, one of the best players, or maybe the best player in the world after that. So uh, uh, imagine just to, to, to train against him was really, really difficult, Mohamed Amin. And, um, I encourage you to see another one. His name was Okocha. It was the African magician. So we had those two in the teams. We had Ronaldinho and Okocha. So it was really difficult on training. But as you can uh, understand, it was really great to have them on our side because they could uh, create and uh, unlock a game at any time. But it was special with Ronaldinho because he was the most gifted player of maybe all time, you know, maybe one of the, the 10 best player of all time in terms of uh, technicality. And, uh, uh, and that's why it was uh, uh, unbelievable because he has the instinct. Um, he, could, uh, he could make a dribble, he could invent a dribble that you didn't even know. And he was all doing that with passion, just for fun. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it's great to have him uh, and, and for the fans, for us to, to play with him and the fans to have seen a, such a, an iconic and wonderful play. Right, so, guys, we have a few more minutes. Um, I mean, what was your question? Um, uh, so, when you were like, uh, yeah, like young, when you when you were like playing football and like practicing, how did you become a football player when you were? Um, when you were like uh, older? Ah, uh, yeah, it's very important. I mean, so uh, when we're young, we, um, we, uh, we practice a lot our, uh, uh, our technique, our vision. Um, uh, there's a lot of technical drills just to improve us. You know, even if it's a left back, if it's a midfielder, if it's a striker or, or, or a goalkeeper, uh, until 14, most of the time, it was uh, more about the vision and the technical abilities. So that means control, a good control, a good pass, a good cross, a good diagonal. So uh, we had a lot of repetition. We had a lot of games. We have a lot of drills for perception as well, just to, uh, to see the space and everything. So it's, um, it's a lot of training yeah, yeah, to improve. And sometimes you can improve quickly, sometimes a bit... Uh, uh, slower, but um, the thing is to always improve. And as I told you, progression is repetition. That means the more control the will do, the more passes on the wall when you're alone in that period, the more you will progress with your touch, 
and with your 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 finesse as well. Uh, DJ Nawaf had a question. Um, he wanted to know if you always wanted to become a football player, or were there any other? Um, was there anything else that you wanted to become as well? Other than football, um, it was more football player, but. Um, uh, education was very important, even nowadays, again. Uh, so they make really sure, because not everybody can be a professional footballer. Most of the time, this is 10 percent of each generation. So that's not easy. So they, they, they made sure that we had um, um, a good education and that we can follow it until the end and, and manage both, because we never know what can uh, happen. It's not everybody who can be a a professional footballer. So that's the one who the club the most. Good, good. Guys, guys. How did guys, you feel please, like a guys, football? Guys, I will unmute you. Just raise your hand and then I will unmute you so like that we just don't get confused, okay? All right, so. Yasin, what was your question? Um, coach, you think that the corona affects us because we don't play matches? Oh, yes, yes, and that's a good question, of course, because you don't practice, you don't enjoy, uh, you don't have as many sessions as you would, uh, you would want. So, of course, you know, it affected you, it affected um, most of the kids in the world, unfortunately. Um, that's what we're saying sometimes. Sorry. Sometimes you should, um, uh, even at home, if you have a garden or in the street, uh, just juggles and all that control and pass against the world. It's very important, you know, just to, to maintain your, your technical standard. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, DJ. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that you wanted to message to the kid before uh, signing yeah. off. Uh, no, just I'm proud, you know, to be with them, you know, all the time. Really, really proud you know, to, to represent Paris Saint-Germain and they can have a feel of Paris Saint-Germain to know our history, to know our team, to know our town. It's, uh, it's really important to me that we have all that uh, interaction. Most of the time we laugh, uh, we have a good time. I think they improve a lot. You improve a lot, guys, uh, with the Paris Saint-Germain Academy. Most of the thing, you know, I'm, they're really happy to come and I'm really happy to see them all the time. So that's the most, uh, uh, important and they can know our club. So uh, I'm very, very happy to be part of that uh, adventure. All right. Thank you so much, DJ. Well, we're really happy to have you here today. Um, it was very insightful, um, your path as a pro and as a being sports analyst. And we hope to connect soon in the near future. Okay. Yes. Uh, with pleasure, Mr. Yannick. And, uh, and congratulations and thank you for everybody. You know, I've seen all the names, you know, it's, it's really great to see you guys. I hope you, you are, you're safe and uh, have a very good day.